Hello and welcome to this latest video in the OCR GCSE Computer Science series. Uh, before we start, take a look at the program on your screen and see if you can work out what the key features of that program are, um, any key bits of code that you maybe might be able to work out, um, and ultimately what the program does. Now it shouldn't matter whether you've used Python or not, you should better read through and have a look at the command words, particularly the prompts in green, and try and think around what are the key features. Pause the video at this point uh, and move on when you're ready. So as I said, this is uh, the OCR GCSE Computer Science series of work. We're looking at Unit 2, Algorithms and Programming, and this lesson looks at variables and constants. As we know, the uh, Unit 2 is split up into five key sections, and this is the first lesson from the second uh, section, the Programming Fundamentals part of the course. You'll see from your screen that this is by far the bigger section of work. You should have covered 2.1 already, um, and by the time you finish 2.2, you're kind of halfway through Unit 2 of the, uh, of the course. By the end of this video, you're hopefully going to understand what variables and constants are. We're going to think around how inputs and outputs are related and how something called assignment works. Uh, we're going to understand how they are used and we're going to consider why they're important for programs like the one we've just seen. So at this point, uh, pause the video and explain what that program on slide one did, either to yourself by writing that down or to a partner or a friend. Uh, you might think around what the key programming elements were, what, what command words did you see, if, print, uh, input, those sorts of command words that maybe were, in, uh, were within the program. Once you've figured that one out, pause and move on. So the first key term within this lesson is variables. Now a variable is any value that's capable of changing during the lifetime of a computer program. Most programs will have variables. If a program asks your name, there is a variable called name and that name slot stores your name. But the next time the program runs, it will store a different name. So variables are storage locations capable of changing during a program. Variables are always stored to uh, use data, and particularly data that can change either during the program or the next time the program runs. This might be things like the player name that we set at the start of the program, or things like the score that might change during the program a number of times, or a high score, a record value from all of the games ever played. We already know, you may know, that you can set a variable using something like name equals input. So we allow the person to reply with input and we save to the variable of name. Pause the video at this point and see what other examples of variables you can think of. Think uh, possibly around computer games. What variables are in a game that you might have played? Then I'd like, like you to think around why variables are needed. Why are they important for most computer programs? Pause the video, get your answers together uh, and move on when you're ready. So a quick activity around this idea of variables. I'd like you to make sure you've got a written definition for a variable down, uh, three examples, and then your explanation of why you think they're important for a modern computer program. Constants are kind of the opposite of variables, but still quite similar. Constants are values which are known when the program is compiled and are fixed, values that are not going to change. Now there's still a storage location, there is a storage location in memory to store, for example, pi in a program, but the computer knows that pi will never change because it's set to a constant value. So constants are those data values that stay the same every time the computer program is run. We know that they will never change. Some examples might be the unit of gravity. So gravity makes you accelerate at 9.81 meters per second squared, if I can remember my uh, physics A level. Uh, the starting number of lives. So within a game, it might always be three lives that you start with. The initial score, probably zero. You know, that is a constant value. Every time the program runs, we reset the score to the constant value of zero. 
and then pi within a, uh, a mathematical program. Those are things that never ever change. Pause the video at this point. I'd like to think what other examples of constants you can think of, again, possibly around a computer game, and then why constants are needed to make computer programs useful. Another fairly quick activity. I'd like to make sure you've got your definition down, that you've got three examples of constant values, and you can explain why a constant is needed. Why might that be useful for a computer to know it's never going to change? Think particularly around where it might store that in terms of the quickest memory and the slowest memory. Where might a variable be put that might change a lot? And where might a constant be put that's not going to be accessed and changed that much? So alongside this idea of variables and constants, we have inputs and outputs. Inputs are data put into the computer from a user or from an external source. When you type in your name, that is an input that's saved to a variable. When a temperature sensor goes off in your car, that's because a temperature has been input into a sensor, checked against a constant value, e.g. what's the maximum safe temperature, uh, and then is formed an output. Now an output, a piece of information sent from the program to the user. So for example, the light coming on in the car would be an output. So to give a little bit more depth around that, inputs are values provided to the computer program from an external source. Now we normally think of that as being the user, the user typing in something, them clicking on a mouse, uh, but it can also be automatic. So for example, data imports or sensors. Uh, so we, we mentioned the example of a uh, temperature sensor in a car, uh, a pressure sensor on a bank vault, a security sensor checking is there motion in a room. Those are all examples of inputs. Now those inputs would be placed into variables and would then be stored within the computer. They might then be checked against constants. What should the value be? So we've got the temperature at the moment as a variable and then we've got the maximum safe temperature stored as a constant. Now if you think about something like a nuclear reactor, those sorts of inputs and comparisons to uh, variables and constants would be very, very important. Outputs are then pieces of information output from the computer uh, and again usually to a person but it could also be outputting to a file, so saving the result to a file or storing that within a database. Uh, if we think about an error message that comes up on a screen, that's an output. A warning siren, that would be an output. A success message or the fact a new joke had been written into a text file. Those are all examples of outputs. Now anytime we have an output, that must have come from either a constant or a variable or some form of check that we undertake on uh, a variable or a constant. Okay, so while this is a slightly different topic, it very much links into that idea of variables and constants. Okay, in a second, uh, I'm going to show you a link for a quick clip from the Mission Impossible uh, film series. Now, within this series, Tom Cruise is trying to rob a bank vault, uh, but that bank vault has a number of sensors that means he cannot, for example, touch the floor or let his uh, sweat drip out into the environment. Uh, the link for that is also down in the comments section uh, where you'll be able to find that. I'd like you to watch that video and think around what inputs are there within that vault and then what outputs might there be? Now we don't actually see the outputs, but what might be uh, outputs from that bank vault? Thinking very much around the security. Now the link is both on the next slide uh, and in the comment section uh, or the description section, sorry, below. Here is the link for the video. Uh, take a look at that, flick back to the activity slide. As I say, you'll also find that in the description below. Our final topic today is something called assignment. Now that is where we set or reset a value stored in a storage location uh, denoted by a variable name. In other words, it copies a value into a variable. 
So when we open our program and we say name equals input, the equals is undertaking an assignment. It's assigning the input to the variable of name. If we look at the example on the screen, jump man and the high score, we're assigning the high score number into the high score variable and we're assigning the jump man, jump man into the player name variable. Those are both uh, memory slots, those are places, you know, physical storage locations within the computer. The assignment element is where we would put in our code the equals set player name to jump man. That is called assignment. Now we might do that for the first time, the variable might be blank, or we might be updating the variable, e.g. loop count. Uh, we might be updating how many times a loop has been through. So assignment is wherever you would see in a computer program a single equals. I'd like you to pause the video at this point and explain what assignment is in terms of computer science and then explain how you would assign a variable in three programming languages of your choice. Now Python is one we've already done. You might look at OCR exam reference language, uh, pseudocode, C++, C Sharp um, or any other programming language that you, uh, you've taught or are interested in learning. It should be uh, one of the most simple things of any programming language to set a variable. Pause the video at this point, get your answers together before moving on. So within today's lesson we've learned a range of programming terminology. Now these programming techniques are needed for any programming, uh, any computer program in any computer programming language. Any program will have variables, they will have constants, they will have values that change and ones that don't. On the next slide uh, you will find a page filled with code. I'd like you to print screen that and then annotate round it either on the computer or on paper. Anywhere you see a variable, a constant, an input, an output, or an assignment. Here is the code. Uh, make that full screen, print screen it, and you can either paste that then into Word, Publisher, something similar, or print off. Now a couple of answers are coming up in a minute, although I've not done all of them. Pause the video at this point and move on when you're ready. So I've just found an example uh, of a couple of the key ones. Now I've got plenty of variables, number, guest, guest number. Each of those has then got an assignment, so any of those equal symbols you might have labelled as assignment. Input, so guess equals input, we are asking the player to enter a guess. Output, uh, where we're printing, I'm thinking of a number between 1 and 100, take a guess and an output towards the bottom. So an output is anywhere really we see our print symbol. Now I certainly haven't got all of them on these computer programs, uh, on this computer program. So if you've got some other answers, that is great. Uh, I was just running out of space in terms of my answers. Hopefully though, you've picked up on one of each of those, those key terms. So here's your quick revision map for today. You should be able to undertake all of the things on that slide, uh, starting on the left-hand side with the easiest and moving up to the right-hand side where the, uh, the examples are slightly more complex. As always, thank you for watching. If you have any questions, please, please do post those either onto Google Classroom uh, or, into, or into the comments section below. Thank you very much.